Hello, hello, everybody. Um, it is November 28th. Um, I finished Nonfiction November a little bit early, and so I thought that I would start my December reading vlog a little bit early as well. Um, I uploaded my end of year reading plans and so that's what I'm going to be focusing on for the month of December. I did have one outside of my physical TBR plans which was Firekeeper's Daughter which I got from the library and I read for my book club and I really really enjoyed it. Um, I talked about it a little bit in my Nonfiction November vlog that a lot of the things that I learned while reading Lakata Woman for Nonfiction November are present in this book and I I just really enjoyed it. I liked um, Dawn as a, as a character. I like how it was very much like I was worried because of the premise um, that it would be too uh, kind of like too unrealistic and I, it is to an extent because of what it is like it's you know an 18 year old being asked to be part of like an FBI investigation which well to be fair I don't know how likely or unlikely that is but I thought that it might like be a little bit too much like mm. but you get enough of like just her living her life and that being what gets her to be helpful for this investigation um and and I just I really liked it I liked her as a character I liked how we get that sort of that um uh the discussion of not being native enough or being too native because she is half native and half uh, just white I think um, and so that discussion a lot um, kind of what it takes to be a registered member of um, of a tribe and it's just like you it was I, I really really enjoyed it I have moved away from reading YA probably the last like two years now um this i think is reads more new adult than young adult because she is 18 and turned 19 during the book um and just the topics and everything about it feel more new adult than than young adult uh content warning on this for um sexual assault and um yeah, I mean, uh, sexual assault, drug use, gun violence, um, racism, the, um, yeah, just kind of like, it is a difficult book, so just go into it with that in mind, but really, really enjoyed it, I gave it about four, four and a half stars, might have been a, a wee bit too long, but overall really enjoyed my time with it, now I'm reading Disappearing Earth by Julia Phillips and this is a sort of like literary mystery so far that is um, every every chapter thus far has been a different point of view which tends to not necessarily be my favorite uh, but overall I am enjoying it because so the mist it begins with two young girls going missing in this peninsula in Russia and uh, so you, the first chapter is the two young girls and then every chapter after that are different people in the community and how they in any way may be tied to the disappearance of the girls or the community itself, things like that. There is some discussion about, um, which is interesting because I didn't know that going in and having just finished Firekeeper's Daughter, there is discussion of like native discrimination um, with like Russian, like I think really in Eastern Russia, uh, discrimination of natives, which is interesting and has added a, a another component to the story that I was not expecting and that I am appreciating. Um, it is very, very slow, very, very quiet. Um, I don't really think it's going to be a mystery f that is fast paced at all. Um, there are some perspectives that I've enjoyed more than others, but overall I am curious to see what happens, so I will continue. I'm a, I am 100 pages in. It's a pretty short book. It's like 250 pages, so I might be able to finish most of it tonight. Um, and then after this, I think I'm going to start on another um, mystery, which I think will be Things in Jars, which I've heard good things about. I uh, will either do Things in Jars or I will do a place for us. I
Hello, hello. Everybody, it is still November 28th, just a little bit later in the day, and I just watched, I just got around to watching the Cloak and Dagger Christmas announcement, and I think that Things in Jars um, by Jess Kid, I believe, which is one that I was talking about a little bit earlier, would fit the first prompt of um, read a book, read a Victorian mystery or one set in the Victorian era. Um, I don't know of the books that I have left how many like mysteries I have. The one I'm reading now is a mystery but I don't know if it would um, fit. Oh it, is, I, it would fit for set in a different country from your own. The one that I'm reading now, Disappearing Earth, because it is set in a Russia. Um, One set between 1920 and 1945. Amateur sleuth. Features a great team. I don't know. I already have something that fits for that. But I mean, I guess I could read it also and just do multiple books with the same prompts. Um, a Girl Called Justice is book one in a series. And I think is one of the prompts like of the first in a series. Hmm. Read a children's mystery series. Read a children's mystery or a new to your series. I do have um, A Girl Called Justice by Ellie Griffiths, which is a both a new to me series and a children's mystery. And I think that might be it, but that's pretty fun that I can sort of partake in that um, in that readathon as well. Today was a very exciting announcement because it is time, nearly time, for the Cloak and Dagger and Christmas Street Thought. Those of you who have been around for a while, you know that a few years ago Kate Howe started the Cloak and Dagger Christmas Street Thought to invite us all to uh, read more mysteries. Hello, hello guys. Uh, it is officially December 1st and we are in the last month of the year. Can you believe it? Um, so much has happened this year. I think it's going to end in a much more positive note than it started, so I'm really happy. Um, I have finished um, Disappearing Earth, and it was okay. I mean, it was very, it was a very quiet um, story. Each chapter had a different perspective. And they sort of all came together. I don't know that all of them were necessary. Um, which, I guess it's saying something given that it's a short book. Um, there were certainly chapters, well, there were certainly chapters and perspectives that I kind of just wanted to like get through to get to the other one. And I wish we would have got a lot more from certain people. So, I don't know. I don't know how successful I found to be the multiple perspectives thing, but... Um, overall, the the reviews that I was reading on Goodreads seemed to enjoy it. Um, like I said, I mean the writing was really nice, and I I def I didn't not like it. I, I I was curious to see what happened to the girls, and I was enjoying myself. Um, it just was not as like riveting um, a mystery, even even though it was slow paced, um, because I don't mind slow paced mysteries. Um, it just wasn't as I don't know. There was just something that I didn't just like absolutely love about it um there was some um commentary on the the treatment of natives in the region which I appreciated uh, it is not unknown voices book as far as I know um but it felt to me it felt it felt genuine but I I would look for more native reviewers just in case um there have been people who have enjoyed it and who like russian uh who like novels written in the uh in the area or in the region and um about any anything sort of like to do with russia so maybe um if you like that you might like this as well but yeah it was okay um and i'm moving on now to the next thing, which will also be a mystery, and this will um, also I can use it for. Um, what is it? Coats and daggers? Is it coats and daggers? What's the mystery? 
the mystery event that's going on. Um, I had not heard about it, but I did recently, and I decided to look through the books that I had, Cloak and Dagger Christmas. Um, I decided to look through the books that I had on my TBR left for the year, and a few would actually apply. So I think this would fit for the set in a Victorian, um, set in the Victorian times um, mystery. So this is Birdie Divine, Detective Extraordinaire, is confronted with the most baffling puzzle yet: the kidnapping of Christabel Berwick, secret daughter of Sir Edmund. Athelstan Berwick, a peculiar child whose reputed powers have captured the unwanted attention of collectors in this age of discovery. I don't really want to continue reading because I don't want to kind of spoil myself in any way, but this is what I will be reading next. It's about 10.30, so uh, I am a little sleepy, but I tend to not go to sleep very early, so I might be able to get a couple chapters into this one and I'll let you know what I think about it. I'm so excited it's like this beautiful peachy like salmon color I can't wait I have been um, already saving a bunch of um, spreads of what I want what I think I want the first page to be I think that's like the most uh, like nerve-wracking thing is how to start the the bullet journal I'm really hoping that this year I can stay more consistent with it and just use it more realistically um, I think even though last year I did try to be realistic I still kind of I think I overshot it a little bit um, and I also won a Goodreads giveaway I got reputation by Lex Croucher she is a um, 
YouTuber, like a comedian, kind of UK YouTuber, and she does talk about books every now and then, and she wrote a book called Reputation. I think it's new adult. Um, I think it's like a kind of sexy retelling of a sort of Jane Austen-y book, so we'll see how I feel about it. Uh, I will read it at some point next year, I hope. Hola, hola, everybody. Uh, it's been... I can't remember how long it's been since I've, re I've filmed. Um, I have had a week without internet, which has been the worst. Uh, thankfully, they finally fixed it today. Um, so I have a lot of work to catch up on. It's, it's been crazy. But I don't know if I told you that I started to read A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza. And... It's so far, I had really no idea what it's about, but it's a, um, so far, it's about this family. Um, oh no, my battery's about to die. I don't remember where I was, but I think I was telling you about a place for us. So far it's about a, just a Muslim family who, and, and we're just getting to see their interaction and their dynamic. It's a, the parents, two daughters, and the youngest son. And it starts off with the mar the day, the wedding day of the oldest. And she asks her brother to come to the wedding. And it seems like they have not seen each other in a while. Um, like the relationship between him and his parents has been tense for a while. And so we get that day and then we go back to their childhood and start to see that dynamic develop and and i'm assuming we'll get to the present day and there's a lot um there isn't so far any it's just a quiet story of like just like about family dynamics and there is religion and culture interwoven into the story i mean that's with their with their identity i feel like you that has to be part of the story um the 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 differences between men and, and women and the decisions that girls have to make um that boys might not have to make and the considerations and it's about love and growing up and and how we sort of navigate the world around each other and with each other and with our families and i'm loving the writing and i i'm loving the characters and so far it's just a quiet story about a family and i really enjoy those types of stories um i don't read them as often because i feel like their seriousness despite the fact that this hasn't really doesn't really haven't hasn't really had any sort of giant tr traumatic experience yet or anything like that um yet i mean we might, there might i would assume there's a climax of the story um i don't know they, they also kind of make me sad um and and just typically literary fiction does because it's more serious so even though i really enjoy it once i am reading it it takes me a while to get to the point where i pick it up um which is why i prefer tend to read a lot more sort of like genre stuff or, or now I'm diving more into um, younger younger reads as well just because they tend to be more uplifting and happy as well uh, but yeah so far I'm about 100 pages in hopefully I'll, maybe I'll be able to finish a large chunk of it today um, it's Saturday at 4.46 so I still have you know, good chunk, a good chunk of the day um, and we'll see how I feel about it. And then I think after that I might pick up Rules of Civility, which is another one that I have the audiobook for. I'm trying to get through the books on my shelves um, that I have audiobooks for. There are definitely going to be some that I'm going to have to carry on to next year that I really hoped I'd be able to get to this year and kind of start off with a clean slate for 2022, but I don't think that's going to happen. I have on hold. A lot of books that I that were on my physical TV or that I just don't think I'm going to get to or don't want to anymore. There are some that are going to transfer over and those will be priority um, first. Uh, though I did p I did start to pick the books that I'm going to read for January and I think only one fr is from this year. <laughs> so maybe I have to um, rethink that again. We'll see. I need more in that world and that's how I feel with this one. Basically this is sold as sort of like a kind of Firefly-esque space. So the more we get to learn about this family, the more... It's interesting how, like, each child... So we definitely get more from Hadia and Amar, who are the oldest and the youngest, respectively. I don't know that we've really gotten anything from Huda's perspective, which is her, the middle sister. Um, but it's funny how each of them sees the interaction of the other with their parents. So 
Javier will feel as though she's not really made her parents proud or or like they recognize her as her own person but she sees it when they do it for the other kids and but when you see it from other the other kids perspective you see that they see and feel the exact same thing it's like oh Hadia is the favorite because she's the one who's the smart one who's gonna be a doctor and all of this stuff and it's um it's this uh, interesting dynamic and and observation of how how kids view the interactions of the parents with siblings and how they might not see how they are seen at times um, and I don't know if that's born out of insecurities or, or what but it's it's an interesting thing I've noticed so we have finally sort of gotten to the reason why Amar, like sort of like the tipping point. And it's so sad um, because it like didn't need to be. And it really all comes down to like decorum and um, the values of his parents and the community and sort of like what other people will say and it it really just plays into how it's always worse for the woman and they really take advantage of that and twist that so that their son like they can sort of get their son to do what they want and it's really fucking sad <laughs> just finished a place for us and it's beautiful it is such a beautiful story it's a sad story but it's beautiful it's really about the ways in which we try to navigate this world together and as a family and the mistakes that we make and sometimes the unforgivable ones and sometimes the the ones that we don't even realize we're making um, and how we have to grapple with the results of that and our guilt and our love and yeah I mean it's just it's just about a family and it's the ways in which they are with each other and it's but it really focuses mostly on just the the son um, the son mostly and then secondly the the oldest daughter the middle daughter kind of gets left behind she doesn't really get a lot of attention and and i don't know if it would have added anything to the story to be honest um i guess i did notice her absence but i also like recognize the significance of the in, of the members that the family chose to focus on because it really was and then of the parents the mo the most of the focus was on the dad so uh i guess the mom and the middle sister were sort of not not really talked about much but um yeah i mean it's it's a beautiful story it's sad but it's beautifully written and it does end with a lot of hope, which I really appreciated um, because I feel like a lot of times literary fiction doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm sad that I waited so long to read it, um, but I am glad that I have. And so, yeah, on to the next. Um, I don't know, uh, I might wait a little bit like maybe wait like three, like an hour or two or something before I pick anything else up. Um, just to sort of give myself more time to digest this one. But I recommend it if a uh, family dynamic stories, if family sort of sagas, if, if just family stories and literary fiction are your thing, then I would highly recommend it. Um, I think it's, it's a beautiful story. So I started to read this book, which is A Girl Called Justice, The Smuggler's Secret. School is murder, but she's on the case. I got it from Book Depository. 
um, last year, and I hadn't read it yet. I started to read it, and all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, last year we were stuck in the school with a murderer. And I was like, that seems like a weird thing to not have started a series with. <sighs> so I look up on Goodreads, and it looks like I, like I just put in A Girl Called Justice, and then I just automatically put that that book that showed up on my physical TBR shelf because the cover looks familiar like it's very similar and so I just didn't like look at it properly but this is the second book and the covers are very very similar but not identical obviously and so and this has a subtitle which the original does not so now I have to put this back on my to read it will go into next year's TBR which sucks because I could have got I could have got through it this year. I mean, I guess, and I could read it. But, like, now that I know, I don't know. I mean, I read the, I was, I've, I'm reading the Elizabeth George series way out of order, which, whatever. I could, but Elizabeth George's Detective Lindley series is enough <laughs> of me doing things out of order. I would rather read it in order. So, now I have to order. I don't have to, but I will order at some point the original, the first one in the series, and then go on to that one. Man, <laughs> that sucks, because it was, it was going to be short, and it's a middle grade, so I thought I'd be able to get through it really quickly, because I have on deck The Invisible Library, which is a the first in a fantasy series, but Scribd's doesn't have it available until the 14th, which is two days from now, so I thought, oh, maybe I could get through most of this by the 14th. Hola, hola. So I started, I don't know if I told you guys, but I started The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. And the premise is a li uh, secret library uh, that employs librarians that are able to move through like dimensions and ta uh, like time, space, I don't know, to be able to acquire um the rare manuscripts books whatever it is that they need things that librarians handle and work with and all of that and the concept seems cool despite the fact that i don't tend to like things about like dimensions and things like that in time but uh fantasy library you know kind of does it sound like my thing. I am interested in the book and I'm continuing to read it because I'm because I so like desperately want to understand and like get on with it but I think sorry but I think the book is trying to do entirely too much. It has mentioned like every fantastical creature known to literature fey dragons vampires magic and technology sort of like mix and and entangle in ways that she hasn't really explained Mommy. properly what yes Galileo. um so i just like 
I don't understand. Like, I don't understand how it works. And I don't know if I just kind of have to go along with it. And it'll, and it'll like, come together. But I just feel so not like tethered to the story um the characters are, are all right but i i worry they'll get lost within all of the like too muchness that is going on um there have been things already that have just sort of stopped without really much of a explanation and i guess you're just supposed to like recognize that in the dimension they're in this is perfectly normal except like you don't know what this or it is um so yeah i guess i she she's not done a good job of setting the foundation of the world and the 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 rules by which it is governed and i don't need a like a <laughs> this is what this means b like i don't need it that way but i just feel like if you're gonna throw people just like straight in the context you provide through your storytelling needs to be like foundational enough for them to understand what's going on and I don't know that it is. Um, you know, because sometimes when you're reading, you're like, all right, I don't get that now, but I'll, get, like, I think I'm going to get it at some point. Like, it's not. <sighs> yes? Um... So yeah, like I said, and I, the concept is so interesting to me that I really want to continue to read it and like get it. But I don't know. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my. What am I doing? I've already done this. Jesus Christ! I don't know where my head is at. I um, am getting ready to go to Florida for Christmas. So I'm trying to get some videos uploaded and have everything ready to go. Um, and so that's what I'm doing now. I'm still reading The Invisible Library. It's taking me forever because I really don't care that much about it. It or the characters. Um, I just, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna give it maybe until the day that I, I leave for my trip, which is Tuesday and then I'll just if, if I don't finish it by then I'm just gonna give up on it and then just pick up something else and take a, a book or two with me for the trip um, so I think I, I'm gonna give myself until Tuesday to finish it and then um, but I don't I doubt that it'll be anything other than like a three star it's just like okay it's there's a lot going it's like too much um, the characters are kind of bland there there's like this a uh, love interest now happening um there's just like the like, like a love situation happening that now that i feel like wasn't properly developed and just kind of was i mean you could have i guess guessed that that's where it was headed but from you guessing just because of the setup of the book to it just starting like just because the 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 reader may guess that that's what's going to happen doesn't mean that you don't take the time to develop it which I don't think was done I think it just like you have the characters talking about like hooking up and you're just like what I didn't see any of that really fully develop on page what's going on so it's just uh, so yeah I don't know um, it's kind of been annoying but I have uploaded a couple of tag videos. I've up, I'm uploading. I'm uploading right now my nonfiction favorites of 2021. Um, I uploaded a, a video planning with me for my bullet journal for next year. So there's a lot of stuff up if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it and you are interested. Um, yeah, I will catch up with you all a little bit later. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, apologies if you hear noises in the background. I got a couple things going on. 
So, I just got back from about five days in Florida, so I thought I would update you on what I read, which was not a lot. I read number four, I believe it was, in the a Noodle Shop Mystery by Vivian Chien. And this one I felt was a little bit, like, more obvious on the <clears throat> main character's part, uh, Lana Lee. Because obviously you have to consider you have to consider that these are amateur sleuths. These are people who like have normal everyday lives and are trying to investigate. And I felt like they're always typically on the nose and pretty obvious when they're investigating, like the questions that they ask and things like that. And you kind of wonder like why the person that they're speaking to isn't being like. I know what you're asking me. Um, I've, this time it did happen a couple times because I just, I really felt like it was pretty obvious. I wonder if the author herself was like, I gotta, I have to have the character sort of acknowledge this. Um, but you know, it's, it was fun and silly and, um, you know, they're a good, they're a good time. I'm reading the one after that right now, um, which I don't remember what it's called. I don't have it near me, but I'll show you after I'm done with it. Um, I also read Tokyo Ghoul Volume 1 and have started Tokyo Ghoul Volume 2. Um, yeah, it is the 27th of December. I have a long weekend upcoming for the new year, so I think that I'm going to be able to finish the current Vivian Chien that I'm reading, finish Tokyo Ghoul Volume 2, and I think I'll be able, I'll be able to finish Rules of Civility, which I think would get me to about 200 books for the year. I have also read a couple of picture books recently, um, and you can see all of that in my Twitter and in my Insta uh, in my Goodreads as well. I don't know that I'll do a December wrap up because I have a lot of videos that I need to film, like my favorites and my least favorites and my anticipated releases and my physical TBR for the next year and things like that. So typically I don't tend to do a December wrap up. Um, that's what this vlog is for. So if you follow me on Goodreads, you should be able to see everything that I'm reading there and the rating. Um, I have been more selective of what I post on Instagram, so I have been posting a little bit less there. Um, but you always see my updates on Twitter also, so if you would like to follow me both on Instagram and Twitter, those are down below as well. Um, and yeah, I had a really nice Christmas with my family. It's the first time that I spent it with my dad and my sister and my brother in I think like three years, so it was really, really nice to see them. Um, I will probably be spending New Year's here with Galileo, just the two of us. Um, but it'll be nice and chill. I'll probably have a book. I'll probably get myself some champagne or some wine. Um, just have like a relaxing day. Um, and relaxing night. Um, who knows, I might even be asleep by the time the year rolls around. But um, overall, the end of the year has been nice. Um, it was really, really great to see my family. As always, the traveling was horrendous. Um, and there was the little girl that sat next to me at the airplane who took her shoes off, which is disgusting. Don't do that if you fly. Like, Don't do that. We got a lot of blankets for Christmas. Galileo has taken over every single one of them. Hi everybody. <clears throat> so I seem to have caught something, which is really upsetting. I have made it two years without getting sick. But I am thankful that it aligned with the job that I'm able to do from home. So hopefully I feel better by next week when I uh, would have to go maybe back into a location. So, we'll see. Um, I oh, I got a couple things. I got a couple things for myself as like, I guess a little treat um, last week and they have arrived. So, I got a body butter from the body shop. If you're looking for like vegan um, companies, the body shop. I got more of those um, nail stickers that I talked about in my most recent video of my recent favorites. So these are like black and silver and gold. I got some hyaluronic acid, which I've heard is good for you or whatever. <laughs> and then I got a new facial cleanser, CeraVe, which is a good company. <coughs> Galileo is wanting to go into a ramen um 
food delivery bag because I was feeling like some broth. He is a silly one. Hello, hello everybody. Um, happy New Year's Eve. Um, I got some raspberry lemonade and I mixed some tequila in it. Um, I was hoping that I'd be able to finish the second, no, this is the fifth in the Vivian Chin uh, noodle shop mystery and then be able to get to another book uh, today, but I didn't because I got sick and I just wasn't in the mood to just sit and read. So, um, I should be able to, it's 7 o'clock, so I should be able to finish this one soon and then I think I have um, a manga that I can finish and then that will probably be my 200th book because I would like to do 200 since I'm so close. Um, and then I'll just start the other uh, one, which was um, Rules of Civility <laughs> for probably tomorrow, which sucks because like, I really wanted to get it done this year. But it will be done this next year. It will happen. Um, I have to do so many end of year videos, but it just <clears throat> life hit hard at the end. Um, with getting sick and everything, so it just hasn't worked out like I wanted it to, but um, I am feeling so much better. Thank God um, So yeah, I'm just gonna finish this book Finish the manga and then finish this vlog so that I can have at least one video up Because I think all the pre-filmed videos that I had before I went to Florida um, Have already been have already gone up. So I don't have anything upcoming so I have to work on that. Um, I did my favorite nonfiction, so that's up. Um, I have to do my favorite fiction. Um, I'm gonna do my favorite fiction, my fav my favorite adult fiction. I'm gonna do my favorite um, children's fiction, and I I was gonna do like children's fiction. I was gonna do YA children's fiction and like graphic um, format all in one, but. I'm thinking that that list is actually pretty long, so I might do like YA and, and children's lit and then anything that's graphic separate, unless that makes for too small a video. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I mean, there are videos now that are like an hour long, so I don't know why I'm fretting. Um, but yeah, I have those two to go up, and then I have, um, I think I'm going to do the postscript tag along with the sort of my numbers my year my my reading year and numbers kind of together as one video and then i have an anticipated releases video to do because i do already have like i think 22 books in my list that i would like to that i are anticipated for the upcoming year you know that i'm not very into new releases but I do like to keep track with what's coming um, because if, if I have like a favorite author or anything like that coming out, I do want to prioritize it and get it. <clears throat> and then I have to do a January TBR because I'm back to doing TBRs. It's just, it's a lot. So, so with um, an hour and a half left of the year, I got to 200. Yay, I finished. Um... Egg Drop Dead, which was pretty good. It was fun. Same, yeah, it's the same old, same old. Um, but it was fun. It, they introduced a new character that hopefully will be semi reoccurring in the future books. And then I finished volume two of Tokyo Ghoul, which was good as well. So, yay, 200. I never in my life would have thought that I would have got to 200 p uh, books in. A year that is so exciting um, I cannot wait to see what my reading year for the next year brings um, we're gonna be switching things up a little bit just because of my work so I'll be reading a lot more YA a lot more middle grade I have re read middle grade because I love middle grade but I had sort of stopped reading YA um, I had stopped finding many that I just loved and adored but because of my job um, I know that I will be better at it if I actually read the books. Um, so, 
uh, you'll be seeing a little bit more of that coming up and um, yeah a lot of cat and a lot of me <laughs> I hope everybody has a lovely new year um, wishing for better things for all of us in the coming year and yeah thank you for watching